All right, let's do a projectile motion problem. Let's get some more practice doing projectile motion problems. Um, this problem reads, you are locked in a heated water balloon war with a friend in an adjacent dorm. Your friend has made a critical error, though. He's left his dorm room window wide open, and you, with a couple of your friends, using a three-man slingshot, launch a water balloon with an initial velocity of 19 meters per second out of your dorm window toward your friend's window. Both of your windows are on the second floor, i.e. they're both the same distance above the ground. The distance between the dorms is 28 meters. Ignore air resistance. What launch angle should you use so your balloon lands in your friend's dorm room? Uh, a very practical problem. Um, enter dorm conflict 101. Uh, let's draw a picture. All right, so we got... There's your dorm. And here is your friend's dorm, 28 meters across the quad. Draw a little line. Um, here goes the balloon. All right, hit your friend's dorm window. And, okay, so let me change colors here. And before I do that, let's, let's draw axes. All right, we'll call right positive x and up will be positive y. Okay, now let me change colors. Let's go with green. All right, I'm going to draw a line, draw a vector representing v naught. And I'll draw a little dashed horizontal line. And what we're after in this problem is theta. We want to know the launch angle. We need to launch this balloon so that it travels across the quad and obliterates your friend's dorm room. Um, all right, let's go back to black. And now let's write down what we know. All right, so let's let's focus on. All right, we'll put the x variables here, the y variables here. Um, so let's go up here. What we do know is well. Let's say that uh, the point the the balloon starts at x naught equals zero, and we know that the quad is 28 meters wide, so the final x position is 28 meters. Uh, what else do we know? Uh, well, we know this is a free fall uh, projectile motion problem, so the the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. All right, and for the y variables, um, one important thing that the problem tells us is that our friend's dorm room is the same height off the ground as ours, okay? Which means that the water balloon, uh, the vertical position where the water balloon leaves our dorm room is exactly the same as the vertical position where it lands at your friend's dorm room. Okay, so x naught and y, uh, the final y position, are zero meters. All right, and uh, this is a free fall problem, so we know that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to, uh, I'm just going to call it negative g. I'll just use a simple g for now to represent 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, um, and some things that we don't know. Uh, well, we don't know t how long it takes the balloon to travel. Remember, t is oftentimes a common, uh, is the, well, t is common in both dimensions, and it's oftentimes times the thing that we use to connect the two dimensions to solve problems. Uh, we also don't know the initial x velocity or the initial y velocity. Uh, we know v naught, but since we don't know theta, we can't resolve v naught into x and y components. Okay, so we don't know that yet. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know where the best place to start is, um, but I suspect that if I start writing stuff down, things will become clear. So I'm going to start with this kinematic equation of motion. I'm going to start with the horizontal. Okay, so then we use this kinematic equation of motion uh, for the horizontal motion. And if I look at this equation, some of these things are zero. 
right? x naught is zero. This whole thing is zero because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Uh, we can so we can rewrite all this as x equals um, v naught x times t. All right, and uh, but we don't know v naught x and we don't know uh, t, so there's two unknowns in that equation. We're kind of stuck there. So let me just come back here and let me write down. Let's turn our attention to the vertical motion. All right, and I'll write down the same equation. for the y direction. And, I, and uh, look at this equation. y naught is 0, so we can cross that out. And um, ay is negative g, so I'll just plug that in there right now. So I got, and let me rewrite this here. So I got y equals v naught y times t minus 1 half g t squared. Okay, uh, now at this point, look at these equations, uh, and we don't know v0x, we don't know v0y, we don't know t, uh, so there's two equations here, but there's three unknowns. If this was two equations and two unknowns, we could solve it as a system of equations, but we can't do that yet. Um, actually, I forgot to do something here. This is also zero because it lands at the same vertical position where it took off. Okay, so that simplifies our life a little bit because then I can write this as if I factor out one of the t's if I factor out one of the t's um, then uh, I can divide both sides by t and that leaves us with 0 equals v naught y minus 1 half gt. I factor out the t, and then I can divide both sides by t. 0 divided by t is still 0. Okay, so it simplifies that equation a little bit more. Uh, and, all right, so I have these two equations, and there's still a bunch of unknowns here, but one thing I can do is remember, we're after theta. We're after theta. Okay, the launch angle. And we, we know that theta v naught, v naught x, and v naught y are all related to one another. And, and so actually I could write out, let me write out that um, some of these relationships. v naught x is related to v naught and theta using the cosine function, and v naught y is related to v naught and theta using the sine function. Okay, so what, what I want to do is I want to take, um, I want to substitute in, since we know v naught and we don't know theta, I'm going to uh, replace these two unknowns in our equation with these two terms that only have one unknown in them, theta. Okay, so I'm going to come and, and take these, and plug them in down here, 